Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex, and this month we've got two things to look at. The first is a new app for managing your Plex server from your mobile phone, and they have a new music player that we'll be checking out as well. Lots of cool stuff to see here. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all of the opinions are my own. So let's get into it now, starting with the management app called Plex Dash. Now, the Plex Dash app will give you a lot of the controls that you might be familiar with on the Plex web interface, but now you've got it on your phone and you can pull it out anytime you want to keep an eye on your Plex server. When you pop into it, you'll get all of the playing media across all of your different devices. And right now you can see we've got four things playing, including two movies that are going to some computers and tablets in the house. I've got the music player on my phone playing some REM in the background here. And then my iPad is playing a TV show. And you can see exactly what's going on in the server, whether or not it's transcoding. Uh, you also have the ability to click on these little hamburger icons to the right of each uh, listing here and you can get details about the media that's playing back, the bit rate, the aspect ratio, all of the good nitty gritty details that you'd be looking for there. I could also of course go in here and actually stop playback if I wanted to kick somebody off some media that they were playing. Uh, again, basically everything you could normally do on your main web interface. Uh, you have the ability to shorten up these views here if you don't want to have all the technical details. On a tablet, you'll have a little bit more real estate to play with here, so you can put things out in a grid if you want. And there's actually a little bit more depth to this interface than meets the eye here. So for example, if I go over here to The Good Place, which my wife and I have been binging over the last couple of weeks, I can click on that uh, icon there and then go into Item History. And what this will give me is a log of every time any episode from this show has been played and by who. Uh, so I thought that was a kind of neat thing to have buried in there. And you also have the ability to do some editing of the history. So for example, if I didn't want uh, this episode playback log from being on the list here, I can just slide to the right here and click remove, and that will take it out of history both for this item and the user that was playing it back. Uh, also, just like we did with the show, I can go here and show user history uh, for what that user has been playing back lately, which is pretty neat as well. So you can really dig in uh, in various parts of this app to kind of get a sense as to what people are doing on your server. We've got more to see though. Let's see what else is in here. Now you also have access to your full playback history. If you click on the upper left hand corner here, you'll get a list of everything that played back. Uh, you can then sort it if you want by media type, by specific users, things maybe you just played back. You can really, again, dive deep into this stuff. Uh, there's a search here at the bottom that will allow you to search what's available on your server. So if I type in Star Wars, for example, it will give me all of the things that are Star Wars related that I have stored on my server. So I have the movies here, as you can see. I also have TV shows that I can get access to. And you can actually go in and edit some of this stuff as well. You don't get as much editing capability for metadata like you would on the server, but I could go in and change the artwork, for example. I can hit edit here, and it'll give me different poster options that I can use with that piece of media that are matched to it, similar to what you'd get on the web interface. Uh, you can also go in and try to fix the match. So perhaps if your Plex server detected the wrong thing, uh, you can point it in the right direction there. Again, a very similar feature to what you would have on the actual web interface. Uh, in this next item here, you have your top charts. You can see what the top things are that are being played back by content type. Uh, you also have the ability to filter things here by specific users. You could also look and see what's been the most popular thing of all time versus this week. Kind of a fun thing to run through there. Uh, the next item here gives you all of your different libraries. Uh, so for example, I can jump into my kids library where we have Dora the Explorer, Paw Patrol, and the Mickey Mouse Club. I can go in and edit some of those things as well, change the uh, little title cards there if I wanted to. Uh, something that I really like about this is that I can trigger library scans now from the app. I don't have to load up the web interface. I can just tap on that uh, little period icon there and go to scan the library files, and that will take a look to see if anything was added to the server if I don't have it automatically scanning. 
Uh, you also have the ability to view history by this particular library. Uh, you can see how many shows have been added to it, for example, over a period of time. And then you also have the ability to uh, set up some settings for those particular libraries in there too. So you've got just a lot of little things that you can tweak here. And again, an extension of the web interface on a mobile app. Now, one of my favorite features on the web interface is the ability to monitor my server's performance. And you can do that from here as well. So if you go over to the gear icon on the lower right hand corner and go over to server graphs, that will give you an idea as to how your server is performing. Again, very similar to what you might get on the web interface, but now it's on your phone or tablet. So you can see how much bandwidth we're using over the network, the processor usage and the available memory. So it looks like I've got a lot more room here if I want to get more people in perhaps to share some media with me. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can change the theme of the app. So for example, we can go to a light theme versus a dark theme and you can get a sense as to what that looks like here as you go back through the interface. So that's pretty cool to be able to adjust the app to your preferences. We'll go back to the dark theme. I like that one better. Uh, if you go over to server logs, you can actually see the logs that your server is generating in real time. You might want to pause these and filter them because they run real quick there. Um, but if you wanted to troubleshoot your server, you can do that uh, from the app here too. So there's a lot to this app and it's currently in beta. So I'm sure a lot of things will be changing as time goes on. Uh, definitely head over to the Plex forums and leave your feedback there because I'm sure a lot of what users want will make their way into the app. One last thing that I like about this is that there's multiple ways to get at different parts of the interface. So for example, if I was browsing through my current status and decided I didn't like the image for Ace Ventura Pet Detective, I don't have to dig through the interface or do a search to get at it. I can just go right over here, go to edit artwork, tap on the edit icon and change it right on the spot without having again to jump out of one section and go to another. I could do that from the search as we did before. I could do it through the library browse here if I want as well. Uh, so again, they're putting things in the same place in multiple places so that you can very quickly manage your server on your phone. So now we're gonna shift gears from administration to consumption because the second app that Plex released this week uh, was an update to their music player called Plex Amp. Uh, it's an update for Windows, Mac, and Linux because that app was on those platforms before, but it's coming now to mobile devices for the first time, and I think that's where this app really shines. It works with iPhone and Android, and I've got some Dave Matthews Band playing right now. It's got some cool visualizations that you can access by tapping on the album artwork. If you hold down your finger, you can change it to some other funky things that you might want to do. Uh, pretty cool. It goes with the music. We're not listening to the music because of copyright issues, of course. Uh, it does support lossless audio. So, of course, I've got a bunch of lossless albums on my Plex server, and you can see this is playing back as a FLAC file over my Wi-Fi, and I'll show you how you can configure things to either transcode or not based on your preferences. Now, my favorite feature by far of this app is something called Recent Plays. And what's nice about this is that it gives you a history of what you've been playing back, but it does it based on what you triggered to get the tracks to play versus a download of every track that you played. So for example, let's say you're in the mood to listen to a Dave Matthews song. Uh, you can load up your Dave Matthews band radio uh, feature of your Plex server and have it play back those tracks randomly and related tracks. And you'll see here, I'm not getting every list of Dave Matthews band radio tracks that we're playing, uh, just the fact that I initiated a play session with that radio station in mind. Uh, it will also log albums. So for example, I triggered the album REM Monster to play. Again, I'm not seeing all of the tracks in that album, just the album itself. If I tap on it, uh, I can go to that album and hit play here and start the album up once again. But again, I'm not seeing all the tracks that played back, just the fact that I triggered the album. So any kind of shuffle list, any kind of playlist that you initiate, that gets stored in recent plays. So you can jump back to those lists and shuffles later. And then if you really want to see everything that played back, 
you can scroll down here to history and get the uh, item by item playback that you might be looking for. I really think this uh, recent plays is a lot more efficient and I like that quite a bit. Now one of the things that the app does is it tries to provide you with continuous music with no lag in between tracks. So you're rarely going to hear any kind of loading going on unless you jump from one group of music to another. So what it's going to try to do in the case of a playlist, for example, is cache up a bunch of tracks that are ahead of what you're listening to, so there's always a very smooth transition between them. And I've got some YouTube safe music running here, uh, and this is a playlist, a little album of three songs, and I just want you to hear some of the transitions going on. So I'm going to unmute the music here, and we'll start going through it. So you can hear as we were going in between tracks that it's very, very smooth because it is preloading everything and getting it on your device, even if you haven't downloaded it, just so that experience doesn't get interrupted. And again, you've got that nice fade in between. All of this stuff is configurable. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Now you can also download music for offline listening like you can do on the regular Plex client, but there's something else you can do on this one that I think is pretty neat. So if we go over here to search, and let's say I want to look for Marty Friedman, who I know a lot of you are big fans of. And if I click on him, you can see that I've got two albums of his stored on my Plex server. And what I can do is just click on these little periods here and actually download a shuffle of his songs. And what's cool about this is that you can determine how many hours you want of Marty Friedman music. So if I've got maybe 15 hours of Marty Friedman, I can say, you know what, give me three hours for my upcoming flight and what it will do is download those tracks to the phone. You can configure whether or not those get shrunken down into compressed audio or just left lossless. Uh, the choice is yours, and again, we'll dive through some of the features here in a minute for configuring that. Uh, another cool thing is that you can download the artist radio in the similar uh, fashion here. So if I do that, I could say, give me three hours of music from Marty Friedman and others like him that are stored on the Plex server. Again, really neat in that you can download shuffles like that and have it available for offline viewing by the hour, essentially. Uh, that was cool. Also in the uh, search section here, and you'll find it peppered through a few other parts of the interface, are these things called oral fixations. And for example, I can look at my top albums of the year so far. I haven't listened to all that much music this year on my Plex server. I need to do a little bit more. Uh, and I can go back to last year, for example. I can change the time frame and give me uh, seasonal stuff here. And you can vary this based on your hemisphere. So if uh, you know springtime is opposite in your hemisphere, it'll give you spring music for your section of the world if you want. Uh, so all sorts of neat stuff that you can do here with the oral fixations. Now they also have something called Mix Builder, uh, which allows you to build out a mix in a really cool way. So if you go to Mix Builder, It'll give you an initial array of artists, people you've listened to recently. So I could say, yeah, give me some Dave Matthews and some Marty Friedman, and maybe I want some, uh, let's put some new age in the mix there. We'll do some Andreas Wallenweider. How about that? So we'll just do a quick search for that. Uh, we can throw him into the mix as well. Uh, we can throw our REM in there, and then we've got a mix that I could download uh, or just play as a radio or download the radio. And this is just something you can create on the fly very quickly without having to go dig through all of your tracks and everything. You can just kind of select by artist, take whatever recommendations it's giving you, a couple of taps, and you've got a shuffle mix ready to go based on your preferences. Now, the app will look at more than just your media, so you can integrate podcasts into it. There's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, one is you can do a search for a podcast that you want to listen to, and it will show up here on the list of podcasts, and I can go ahead and start playing things back. Uh, one thing I noticed is that it does not download podcasts like the regular Plex client can do, uh, so that's one area that they probably need to add things to. Uh, you can also change your source to be all podcasts if you want, and when you do that, you'll get all of your uh, podcast showing up in the interface when you go to the home screen here, for example. So there is some podcast integration. You can also integrate title with this like you can on the other app and it will integrate in similar ways. So for example, I've got a playlist here, a Dave Matthews playlist that has some songs on my server and some on title. Uh, those will show up and be playable here. You can also switch the app over to title and have it uh, allow you to navigate the title library if you want. Uh, so you have some options there. 
Uh, there are also a lot of settings you can dig through. I'm not going to go through all of them, uh, but there are a few things that I think are worth noting. Uh, the first are your preferences for music quality. Uh, so for example, if you are on Wi-Fi, like I am right now, it'll play the full song back. So if I've got a big FLAC file, 40 megs a shot, it'll just uh, play those right over the uh, Wi-Fi with no conversion. I have mine right now set on cellular to go to 128 kilobits, but of course you can adjust that. Uh, you can go the maximum if you want, if you don't have a data cap. Uh, so you have that as an option, but you can also adjust the bit rate individually. And Plex chose the Opus codec for the audio compression here. That's an open source codec. Now, if we dive into the settings again here, you can see there's an option for downloads. So right now it's set to automatic. And what this will do is if I'm on cellular, it will download the audio at 128 K bits per second. And if I'm on Wi-Fi, it'll do the maximum, but I could override that uh, with one of the settings here. I could always set it to maximum, for example, and no matter where I am, I get my FLAC files. But of course, my upstream bandwidth here is only about 12 megabits per second, and that might take a while. Now, a couple other settings worth looking at. The first is in the playback section where you have some audio processing, namely uh, loudness leveling and those sweet fades that we were demoing before. If you don't like those things, you can turn them off, but they are on by default. Uh, you also have a graphic equalizer you can enable if you want to better fine tune your audio and they tell you they won't judge you there either. Uh, there are some settings in the radio function here to bring in title media and you can also set how many degrees of separation from the target artist do you go. So for example, if you're listening to Dave Matthews, it'll give you other artists that sound like Dave Matthews. And if you have the setting too high, it'll kind of go down a rabbit hole. And maybe you don't want to go too far from Dave Matthews on your Dave Matthews radio. It'll keep it at one degree or two degrees of separation to keep everything really tight. But if you let it on go on unlimited, it'll just kind of pull up stuff and bring you down uh, a little bit of a journey there. So you can adjust how it picks tracks uh, in that setting. Uh, the last thing to look at here is under advanced, especially caching, uh, because this will determine how many things it downloads to the cache so you have that uninterrupted music. So if you're on Wi-Fi, uh, right now my phone is going to download the next 15 tracks. On cellular, it's going to do five. I can change that if I want. Uh, maybe on cellular, just to save my data, I can have it only do the next track, for example. You also can set the size of your cache. So if you're planning on listening to a lot of lossless FLAC files, you might want to make this a little bit bigger because those files are a lot bigger. Uh, and then, of course, you can adjust it back down if you are going away and don't want to have too much space on your phone used up by the cache. If you're noticing your cache is too big, you can hit a button here and wipe it all out. And on desktop, the app is identical to the mobile version. Everything is in the same place. The interface functions the same way. Uh, you can make the window smaller here if you wanted to give yourself kind of a minimal player. Uh, but beyond that, it is pretty much the same thing. All of the download options are on here too. So altogether, it will be the same experience on mobile as it will be on desktop. So there you go, two new experimental apps from Plex. Again, these both need a Plex Pass to be able to use them, but it's nice to see them starting to experiment with some things and giving us Plex Pass holders some new stuff to play with. Uh, these are all, again, early stage apps, and I'm sure they're looking for feedback. Uh, so definitely head over to the forums and give them suggestions as to what you would like to see in future iterations. That's going to do it for now. I want to thank Plex for their continued support of the channel. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.